1997, Dr. Jamie McDougall, a psychologist from McGill University in Montreal, went to Baker Lake in the Northwest Territories as a consultant involving an Inuit deaf man and access to justice. The issue involved was the fact that the accused Inuit deaf man did not know or understand American Sign Language, a sign language that is normally used in the southern part of Canada. As a result, the court could not find a reliable way to communicate with the deaf man in context of the legal process. After many hours of consultation with the deaf man and numerous members of the Baker Lake community, Dr. McDougall established that the deaf man in fact did have a systematic form of sign language to communicate. In order to further study the nature of this newly discovered sign language, which Dr. McDougall termed Inuit Sign Language, Justice Canada supported a research study in four communities in the Northwest Territories. Deaf people were identified in Iqaluit, Rankin Inlet, Baker Lake, and Pengnirtung. It was established that deaf people who never went to the residential schools in the South to learn American Sign Language had developed their own indigenous form of sign language, now called Inuit Sign Language. Some dialectical differences between communities were identified. However, the language was mutually intelligible between communities. In 2001, the Nunavut Territory was established as Canada's newest territory, separate from the Northwest Territory. Shortly after that, the government of Nunavut, in particular the Department of Culture, Language, Elders and Youth, undertook a comprehensive language consultation with all the communities in Nunavut. As part of this process, a number of deaf people from various communities, including their families and friends, raised the issue of sign language used among deaf people in Nunavut. It was in this context that in July 2006, Dr. McDougall invited deaf people, their family and friends, from all regions of Nunavut to a focus group in Iqaluit to recalibrate and discuss issues related to deafness. In addition, the recognition of Inuit Sign Language as an official language by the Nunavut government was discussed. Most people here I have visited in their own communities. So the first thing we see is that different deaf people and their families here have different sign languages. Now, all of these languages are good. And we're here to learn each other's language, and we want to hear everybody's story. I started when I was 11 years old. I went to school in Edmonton there, and uh, that would have been in six, well, 1961 till 68. And when I first got there, I, le I was learning the basics, a lot of the stuff from the students. And it took me a while to learn, like, I guess about three months to learn the basics, the ABCs, like how to fingerspell and stuff like that. But after about three months, I really started picking up the language very, very quickly. So that was great for me. Actually, it was interesting because when I came back to my home, my parents obviously were uh, speaking in Inuktitut, and I didn't understand them. And even just trying to figure out some of their lip reading was very difficult. Uh, so as a result of that, we actually, right at that time, started creating or started creating home signs or signs that were based on Inuktitut. My suggestion, I mean, what I see is that you have at least two sign languages here. One is ASL because so many people went south and then people from the south came up here and taught ASL. So that language has to be protected. That's your sign language, mm -hmm. right? So if you go to the hospital or school, you need to have interpreter there trained yes, in your language. Whatever language yeah. you're speaking, if it's ASL, that's mm -hmm. it, right? So over there, they mainly have a different language, which I started calling Inuit yeah. Sign Language. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it's those are the people that did not go down south. Mm -hmm. It's the same as hearing people maybe who never went south to residential school, never learned English, they only speak in Nupitok, right? Yeah. Same thing. Mm -hmm. And so we need to protect those people too, I think. They need to have the same service. So 
My suggestion, but it's up to you people to decide, is if they get a language act that we make sure everything is protected. So all deaf people, no matter which language they're using, everybody is good, is good. So this historic meeting of deaf people language. and their families and friends and was very successful. It resulted so in a number of concrete recommendations for future right development of sign language as well as other general matters related to the welfare of deaf people in Nunavut. One of the main recommendations was the need to document the Inuit sign language and the American sign language and their use in the Nunavut territory. In addition, there was a pressing need to begin the documentation of the oral history of deafness in Nunavut. Canada Goose. As a result of these recommendations, Dr. McDougall, with the support of the Nunavut government and the Department of Culture, Language, Elders and Youth, led a number of studies directed to the documentation of Inuit Sign Language and the oral history of deafness in Nunavut. In 2008, the Inuit Language Protection Act and the Official Languages Act were passed in Nunavut and by the Canadian federal government. Inuit languages are now considered official languages and in a parallel process, the government recognized Inuit Sign Language as a language of education and a language that was normally used in Nunavut. The Premier of Nunavut stated that the government of Nunavut recognizes that the language rights of deaf people, including the right to sign language, was protected by Section 15, the Equality Section of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. In order to affirm the recognition of Inuit Sign Language by the Government of Nunavut, the proceedings of the Legislative Assembly were interpreted for the first time in both ISL, Inuit Sign Language, and ASL, American Sign Language. Many deaf Inuit with their family and friends were in attendance in the gallery of the Legislature to applaud this historic event. Meanwhile, in the time period of 2007 to the present, the Inuit Sign Language Documentation Project continued under the leadership of Dr. McDougall. This project involved many deaf people and their families from a variety of communities in Nunavut. Booklets, flashcards, posters, CDs and DVDs were developed in both ISL and ASL and distributed throughout Nunavut to a variety of institutions, including elementary and secondary schools. Of particular interest was the innovation of video conferencing facilities, already available throughout Nunavut in the education and justice systems and its use as an effective way of sign language communication. Demonstrations based at the Iqaluit Hospital and the Iqaluit Courthouse established that effective sign language communication could be held between Iqaluit and Baker Lake and Iqaluit and Rankin Inlet. This form of video communication holds great potential not only for the linking up of deaf people in the territory but also as a means for providing remote video sign language interpretation, in particular in the education, justice and health care systems. It is important to note that education, justice, and healthcare systems all have legal requirements for the provision of sign language interpretation, where necessary, for both deaf children and adults. For example, the Eldridge Supreme Court decision taken in 1997 mandates sign language interpretation for deaf people as a free service under the Canadian Health Act for all deaf people who require it. Similarly, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms mandates sign language interpretation where required throughout the legal process. The challenge of the future is to capitalize on the documentation and other related work that has been accomplished to further improve the general welfare of deaf people in Canada's newest territory. Dr. McDougall has observed that the Inuit Sign Language has a long and fascinating history 
which can reveal much about language itself. As well, the history of the integration and acceptance of deaf people in the traditional Inuit society has much to teach us about the full inclusion of deaf people in all aspects of community life.